All right, with this next activity, we're going to take a big step towards moving away from reporting on knowledge in the field that's already been presented by other active researchers and turning our project into active research by you. In order to do well in the AP research academic paper and in the presentation and oral defense, you will have to create a new understanding. So we need to figure out how does your line of inquiry situate itself in an existing body of knowledge? How are you contributing something new that moves the understanding in that field forward, even if it's just a little bit? We're going to look at an activity today that will help us identify the gap in the field that needs to be filled by our work and explain why our work is both relevant to the field and necessary, even if it's not the world's most earth-shattering news. There's no expectation that as a high school student, your work is going to fundamentally transform a field, although that could happen. But we just need to be able to communicate that what we're doing is addressing an existing need in our field. And so today we're going to try and find our gap in our field of research. Uh, in order for you to establish your credibility as a researcher, you need to be able to communicate your contributions. And the way we go about doing this in our academic paper is through the communication in our review of the literature, or in many uh, papers just simply referred to as the literature review, where we're going to communicate what other existing sources of information are saying about the topic, how they're related to each other, and then communicating how there is something that is just not quite present in all of these uh, previously published sources, so we're going to contribute to that. In order to do that, we need a previously created annotated bibliography, which is a report on the knowledge in the field, and we're going to take that annotated bibliography, which is what we've learned about what's happening in our field, and we're going to turn it into a cohesive review of the literature in the field that relates to our line of inquiry. So you're going to take your sources from your annotated bibliography and we're going to try and figure out what's your missing piece of the puzzle that those previous sources created. You know, what hasn't been covered by other researchers who have looked into your topic? That needs to be our driving question as we go through this activity. And I want you to think about this as if the sources in your annotated bibliography come together to form a puzzle. Now, I'm not going to take the credit for this metaphor. This is clearly something that's above my pay grade. This comes from Serena McGrogan, the curriculum director for AP Research, where she communicates that if we think of it visually as a puzzle, we know the pieces come together, but maybe there's, you know, 10, 15 or 20 pieces to your puzzle, but it doesn't quite fill in. Maybe there's something missing in the middle. And so if you can see in this image that I've created here, we have sources A through J that come together, but clearly they're not fully connected. We don't have a fully realized image. Now, it's important in understanding as we create our gap, we're not trying to fill in all of the missing pieces in our field. We're only trying to add one additional piece. So you can see here in this image, your inquiry would just represent that one missing piece that would go there in the center. It wouldn't complete the puzzle and you also notice that the puzzle pieces don't always perfectly match up together but it does make sense they are logically connected to each other even if it's not a perfect fit so how do we go about doing this we're going to take the eight sources from our annotated bibliography and we're going to start off with a piece of notebook paper and we're going to try to categorize our sources or as we may have discussed before we're going to sort the laundry which pile do the sources go into. And so on a piece of notebook paper, you want to sketch this out. Now, I don't know what all of your categories would be, but I've given you a template of something you may want to consider. Uh, for most of us, we would have to discuss some context, you know, and we think, do these sources help to explain the existence of a problem? Clearly, if it's a good research question, there needs to be an existence of a problem that is being addressed by multiple researchers. So does this source contribute to understanding the context of the problem? Then another way I might want to separate them is quite simply saying perspective number one, perspective number two, or perspective number three. You know, which sources share a similar approach, method, or results that make up one perspective? They, they attempt to look at one particular uh, 
problem or aspect of the problem or one particular research method to address the question or they have results that may be connected. I want to keep in mind that as you gather more sources, you may have to add more perspectives or you might not even use the words perspective. You might be far enough along in the line that you're able to put these into particular categories relative to your subject. It just depends on your line of inquiry as to how clearly you want to label these different groupings. But if I were to sketch this out on paper, how would they be separated? Maybe I want to do it in columns. Maybe I want to do a web diagram, but I should be able to sketch out on paper um, how these issues relate to each other. How do these sources connect, but also how can they be divide it. So here's an example. Um, if we were going to talk about the stress and anxiety levels of high school students, which is something that we're all <laughs> familiar with, especially if we're this far along in the AP research process. So I might have some sources that establish the context, right? Source A talks about the levels to which kids are stressed. Maybe they've gathered survey information to communicate the levels of stress. And source B stress the impact on physical health. Now I can see that source A and source B have established kids are stressed and this is having an impact on physical health. So stress is negatively impacting physical health, which creates the context of the problem. Maybe then I move on to sources C and D and they represent a perspective about how, how we can take physical health and its relationship to academic performance. If health is bad, academic performance may be bad. Um, source D tells us improved physical health improves mental health for adolescents. And there's an obvious connection between improved health and improved mental health. Does that mean there's also a uh, connection between improved physical health and improved academic performance? I don't know. Maybe here's a point at which I might want to look for a source G or H or adding to this, can I find that connection or is it possible that connection isn't established and that might be an area for me to address as my gap. These two sources clearly connect physical health and something related to brain performance, but is there a direct connection between improved physical health and improved academic performance? I don't know. Source and C and D don't clearly establish that. Possibly that's a place I can enter with my line of inquiry or sources E and F. They look at yoga could be used to improve physical health and yoga could be used to reduce stress. Well, if I look at all these sources together, there seems to be a relationship between physical health and something going on in my brain, but I don't see clearly communicated that improved physical health through the use of yoga might improve academic performance. Is it a possibility that that could be the gap that I want to investigate? Is it possible that maybe an experiment about a group using yoga and then evaluating their academic performance both before and after the intervention? Do I see that in the sources here? I don't know. I might want to do some further investigation to see if anybody else had already done that work, but it seems logical that possibly there's a gap here in the field where no one has quite looked at the connection between yoga, improved physical health, and that contributing to an academic performance of high school students. So how do I go about putting this together for my own line of inquiry? It's very simple. I'm going to categorize my sources on notebook paper and sketch it out. Then I'm going to need a large piece of poster paper to start a poster. Now my poster needs to include all of the following information on the front of the poster, the name, the class period, the research topic, and labels for the categories for my sources. Now, visually, however you want to go about doing that, that's fine. You might want to do it in columns. You might want to do a bubble map, uh, a, a web map. It's, it's however you want to visually categorize it so it makes sense for you, but it needs to be clearly labeled. Then I'm going to use post-it notes, ideally of different colors, to summarize the sources. So maybe if we go back to the previous slide, maybe context, all of those post-it notes are blue. And maybe perspective number one, all of those post-it notes are green. So ideally, this would be done in a color-coded way with the post-it notes. Now, if you don't have multiple color post-it notes and everything's yellow, maybe use the color of your ink or you're on your double bubble map or your web map, however you're putting it together, maybe you use colors to clearly identify. Maybe you just label it 
in different colors, but visually we should be able to see the clear difference. Then I'm going to put those post-it notes on the posters in the appropriate places based on my categories. And this should give me an idea, oh, visually, this is how I want my review of the literature to be written. These are the sources that I will use to talk about context. These are the sources I will use to talk about perspective number one or perspective number two or whichever labels you choose to use. But now this poster can be put up in whatever workspace you're working on and now you have a visual outline for the review of the literature you're going to write. Now based on this work you may have identified a need for more information regarding your topic so now it's time to go and look for some additional sources. In order to do this level of work well it's it's going to be really difficult to do it with only eight sources. So then within each category you should have at least one source that was really strong. You might want to go and look in that source to look for connected sources. And then as you locate those sources, you will add new post-it notes to your poster. So obviously this is more than one class period. This is a working document that we will use and will also become a part of our prep binder to help us track the thinking as it changes over time. But if you start looking for sources and you can't find anything that addresses that need, now you may have found the gap that your work could feel. You could say, it would be really nice if there was a source that directly connected yoga to improved physical health and academic performance, but that doesn't exist. So now we have created and we can communicate a need for our source. Um, so go to those original sources of the eight, you might be able to find another 10, 15, or 20 sources you might wanna use simply by stretching those sources out. You know, you look for sources which are cited by your first source or sources which cite the original source or additional works by the authors of the original sources. If you've seen my video on stretching your sources activity, which was originally created by Sean Byrne at Glenbird High School in Chicago, then you know how this works. Or you can go back to that. It's stretching your sources. It's a paper slide video and it'll explain how you can take one additional source and that it's credible and relevant to your topic and stretch it out and find more sources. But remember, part of this activity is we want to find where that gap exists, meaning that knowledge doesn't exist. And that will let us know, oh, that's where my work needs to live. That's the identified need so that I can communicate that my line of inquiry is valuable and will contribute to the field. I hope you found this to be helpful.